Good day everyone, my name is Ian. I represent PBL15. So let's move on to our discussion for case number 7. Mrs. J is a 63-year-old lady who has type 2 diabetes for 20 years on oral medications. She was admitted for severe hypoglycemia and required intravenous dextrose infusion in hospital. She had a history of recurrent milder hypoglycemia and at times her blood sugar went down to as low as 2.5 millimoles per litre without any symptom. Her HbA1c was 6.5% and after stopping dextrose infusion, her blood sugar ranges between 8 to 12 millimoles per litre. She had normal renal and liver function tests. You plan to discharge her from the hospital. Alright, let's interpret what we got from the case details. First of all, Mrs. J has blood sugar as low as 2.5 millimoles per litre without any symptoms and that indicates that she has hypoglycemia unawareness. Next, she has history of recurrent milder hypoglycemia and we think that she might have diabetic autonomic neuropathy. And her blood sugar after infusion was 8 to 12 millimoles per litre, which is high, exceeding the normal range of 7.8. The first question is, what are the potential drugs that could have caused her emission? And we think that she might be on sulfonylurea or megalitinide. Moving on to the second question, what are the choices of anti-diabetic drugs for Mrs. J and what are the justifications for them? First would be metformin because it decreases hepatic glucose production, does not stimulate insulin secretion, no hypoglycemia, decreases HbA1c, and it is of low cost. Next would be thiazolidinidions. It is a PPA gamma agonist and it does not cause hypoglycemia as well. Other drugs like exenatide, cetagliptine and acabose were included because they do not cause hypoglycemia too. Question 3. What are the implications of recurrent mild hypoglycemia? First of all, let's look at the mechanisms of hypoglycemia unawareness to have a clearer understanding. It is caused by hormonal imbalance leading to impaired glucose homeostasis and causing hypoglycemia-associated autonomic failure, which ultimately leads to recurrent hypoglycemia. You can now pause the video to look at this flowchart if you want to. Here are a few consequences of recurrent hypoglycemia, which I will only pick the main points to talk about. First is the CVS complication along with the neurological complications like seizures and coma, and a more severe form causing sudden death. For the elderly population, they will have an increased risk for falls, incontinence, frailty, cognitive impairment, and depressive symptoms. Psychologically, it can cause fear, secondary poor treatment compliance, and increased anxiety and decreased levels of satisfaction and happiness. Lastly, it will definitely impact the patient's quality of life because of the fear of recurrence, as well as the compensatory behaviours to reduce hypoglycemic episodes, like decreasing their insulin doses, causing negative glycemic control and in turn may increase their risk of serious health consequences. That's all for our presentation. Thank you so much for listening and thank you Shamina for the aesthetic slides. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice day. Bye!